Okay, if you have your papers, pass those kind of up so I can get those before we get started. She wasn't Only one, oh, I was about to say, only one paper from this group? Huh? Oh. Uh -huh. For real? On the left side. Okay, so the last time we were here, hello, okay, the last time we were here, Wednesday, um, we, you all started working on a character analysis for the characters you were assigned from the novel, right? Okay, so today what we're going to do is talk a little bit about point of view and perspective. And what you will have to do at the end of this discussion is write a short little paragraph or summary based on the point of view of your character. Okay? So on the board we have two words, perspective and point of view. And we're going to use those words interchangeably, but can anybody tell me what perspective is or what point of view means. What do, what do we mean when we say perspective? The way you see it. Okay, the way you see something. Anybody want to add to that? Nobody else has any idea of what perspective or point of view means? Point of view is like your way of seeing something. Okay. Your position. Your position? Okay, so good. So perspective slash point of view. The way you see things, what your perspective is, how you interpret things. And perspective is really important, especially when we start analyzing situations. Um, remember that last Wednesday I asked you all to think a little deeply about the characters and why they act and why they react the way that they do to some things. Okay, so that's all a part of perspective and point of view. But to bring it to bring it home a little more closely, let me give you this example. So in the spring, spring break, most of you all will experience your first college spring break, right? Mm -hmm. And let's just say that we all are able to go to Cancun, Mexico for spring break. We're all, well, you all are going, I'm going to stay here. You all are going to Cancun, Mexico for spring break, right? The legal drinking age in Cancun is what, 18? 16? It's 16 to 18, which means that those things that you all kind of do on the sneak here, you can do them freely in Mexico, right? Okay, so you go to Mexico for that week, you come back here, and I say, I want to hear a little bit about your spring break. I want you to give me three different letters. One letter is going to go to your boyfriend or girlfriend. The second letter is going to go to your best friend. And the third letter is going to go to your pastor from your church back home. Right? Okay. So, when you write the letter to your girlfriend or boyfriend, what type of information is that letter going to contain? Your girlfriend or boyfriend? Good information. Like what? Like some other boys that you gonna read it out. Right. So if when you're writing to your boyfriend or girlfriend, let's just be honest. So if you met this boy in Cancun who goes to school at Tuskegee and y'all hooked up a little bit in Cancun, are you really gonna tell your boyfriend or girlfriend that? No. Okay, what type of information are you gonna include in the letter to your boyfriend or girlfriend? Are you a bitch? No, your girlfriend or boyfriend? 
If you went to where? Like a park. A park in Cancun? Okay. You're not going to give You're not going to give the details. You might say, we went to a party. It was chilling. Right. I thought about you. I was in the club. I couldn't even I couldn't even dance because I was thinking about you, right? Okay. That's what you're going to tell your boyfriend or girlfriend. What are you going to write in the letter to your best friend? Like what? Tell turn on turn They might be that with me. Okay. So you're going to tell them the details. She said the turn up, the turn down, everything, okay? Why would you give that information to your best friend but not your boyfriend or girlfriend? And you can tell them all your secrets without fear of what? <laughs> without them telling your business, without them judging you, without them getting mad at you, without them throwing it up in your face at the end of the day, right? So that's a matter of perspective. We know that when we tell our boyfriend or girlfriend something, they're looking at it from a different lens. They're looking at it like, you're mine. I don't want you with anybody else. This is supposed to be us. But when you're looking, when you, something that's coming from the perspective of your best friend, they're like an open book. You all share everything. Um, you tell them everything and you don't have to be worried about them judging you or throwing you under the bus later down the road. Okay, so there is just a different perspective. Now, the third letter goes to the pastor of your church back home. Oh, we, oh, we just tell them we went to church. Okay. <laughs> you don't preach like you. Okay, you found the only church on the beach in Cancun and that's where you were, right? Don't preach it was on a prayer retreat. A prayer retreat. That's a good one. Okay. So you went for your spring break. You went on a mission trip to Cancun, right? And if you weren't saved before you went to Cancun, you are definitely saved now, okay? So <laughs> that is the difference in perspective, right? So we all know how perspective works. We, none of us can act like we are ignorant of what it means to have perspective because we tailor our experiences and we tailor the information that we give to people based on how they're going to perceive us and based on what we think their point of view is going to be. Right? Which leads us back to the novel and the family in the novel. So when you all took your last, your quiz on Friday, what was one incident that was revealed in the novel? Right. She was molesting him sexually harassing him, whatever term you want to give to it, it was not right, okay? It was definitely wrong. Now, when the kids told their father about it, how did he react to it? Right, he didn't take their side, he was angry at them. He said that his son, his son is a man, which implies what? That he can take care of That he should have been able to take care of it himself, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you have been in a situation like that, is that the experience, that the response, or the point of view, or the perspective that you would hope that your parent would have, or your guardian, or your loved one, or whoever you're sharing the information with? No. No, you want them to be more concerned. So imagine how the kids felt in that situation. And you all are about to imagine how the kids felt in that situation. Okay, so you all each have a different character. You either have mom, you have Brian, Jeanette, Lori. What I want you all to do is take a couple of minutes, talk amongst your group how you think each of those individual characters reacted to what happened to Brian. Think about it like you are getting ready to make a diary entry. How many of you have kept a diary before? I guess we call them journals now. That's the word, journals. So none of you have kept a journal in a, in a while? Okay, so, so, so Ms. Brown said you use notes in your phone now. How many of you jot down things, notes in your phone? I do that. I do keep a journal, but I still jot down things in my phone. So 
We'll go with that scenario then. You have your phone, you have your iPhone, because who uses an Android? Um, you have your iPhone and you are jotting down your reaction to what happened to Brian. But you're coming from the perspective of whoever your group's character is. So if you, th is this group Brian? What? You all are Jeanette. So you all are looking at this from Jeanette's perspective, okay? Um, which group has Brian? Okay, you all are writing from Brian's perspective. Where is Lori? Okay, so Lori, you all need to get together and you're coming from Lori's perspective. Where's mom? Is the mother not here? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so you all are writing from the mother's perspective. And then where's the father? You all are writing from his perspective. And then my group number four, you all are special in that you're looking at it as a whole. How does this even further contribute to the assumptions you all have already made about the family? Right? Okay, so in your group, talk a little bit about the perspective or the outlook that each of these individual characters have on that one situation. And I'm going to come by and talk to you all about it. And I also want you to just make some notes so that you can share them with the class. Yes, ma'am. Right, how you think they felt. So you all have mom, right? So how do you think what? No, I don't want you to write how she is supposed to feel. Right, like you are putting yourself in her shoes. Okay, right. What you, what she may have been thinking? Cause you all know her. <laughs> so write that. Write that. Think about. These are just jots right now. And you still don't have group. Okay, you can scoot on up there. Yes. Yes. So you all are just summarizing the situation. Telling us, so say for instance somebody who has not read The Glass Castle. They come in while we're having this discussion and they want to know what's going on. What happened at this point in the novel? What would you tell them? That's what you all are doing. About that? About that situation only. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You all right? <laughs> you all right, me and girl? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And who do y'all have again? Lori. Lori. Okay. And... Jeanette. Jeanette. And... So really, you all are just going to point out how this is just further... Further reiterating the dysfunction in the family. You know what I mean? Because the parents didn't have a typical reaction to what was going on, right? Like most parents would go crazy if their kid told them something like that and they just didn't have the typical reaction. So you all think a little bit about why did dad react the way he did? You already did that? How did y'all already do that? <laughs> okay. We're going to share with the class. Okay, so you all have the good one. Because this whole thing was really centered around his reaction. See, th that group that's writing about the mom's reaction, she didn't really have one, so they are just 
Right. right. They're they're kind of gathering everything that they know about her in the novel so far and making an assumption. Uh, it's an educated assumption, but an assumption nonetheless. He actually gave you all a reaction. So I want you all to think about what may have been going through his head when he reacted the way that we that he did. Because we know that that's not a typical reaction that a father would have in a situation like that, right? Especially as it relates to his son. So think about what the typical reaction would have been, what his actually was, and the disconnect between those things. Like, why do you think he did that? Why was he protective of his mom? Why did he, like, basically tell his kid to get on? You know, you can take care of yourself. Think about those things. Okay, so what you're doing is you're giving me a little bit of a summary. Everything that you have written there is true, but it's a summary. I want you to think a little bit about the psychological issues that you must have to have that reaction to your child being molested or being on the verge of being molested. Think psychologically. And this is for everybody, for, for, for everybody. When you are um, jotting down your notes, be sure not to get, just give me a summary of what happened. I already have a group who's working on the summary. Think about this from a psychological perspective. Remember when last Wednesday we talked about how the things that we do and the people that we are, um, the values that we have, they come from somewhere, right? Though we just, we weren't just born having these thoughts and feelings and values and um, points of views and perspective. We actually got those things from our upbringing, from our families, from our friends. So think from a psychological perspective about why, you know, the characters may have reacted the way they did. So if we have Jeanette here, one of the things that we discussed as it relates to Jeanette is that she is like the ride or die for their daddy, right? Lori will sometimes point out that their parents aren't all together and that they're wrong, but Jeanette is, is, is the one who, regardless of the situation, she is going to take up for her father, right? So why, what connection, what is the motivating factor behind her always being in his corner regardless of what happens? That's what I want you all to think about. Don't give me summaries. Think about what is going on in these people's heads that makes them react the way that they do. You can do it, you can do it. No, you just jot down some notes. Whatever it, it takes to get it out of your head and on paper at this point. A journal entry, and you're writing about this incident from the perspective of whichever character you have. Um, because we do know that when we, even when you all wrote your reflective essays, that was your, your thoughts about this class and what you've done in here and what you hope to do in 102. Nobody else can influence that. That was you being alone with your own thoughts and your own writings, right? So if you think about this from that perspective, and if you write these things down as if you are making a journal entry on behalf of your character, that may help you think a little bit more deeply about um, how the character may have felt. You can. Mm -hmm. That's okay. And you'll get, you'll get it, you can change it and then resubmit it. Hi girls. What do y'all have? Who's care? Y'all have Ooh. <laughs> okay, so what do you have? Um, it's put down that he didn't know how to react to the situation.
situation and the reason he asked him he asked is because he doesn't get the same attention as us. Okay, so Write me a diary entry on Brian's behalf. Dear diary, will the boys say diary? Dear journal, <laughs> dear notepad. And then go from there. Like put yourself in Brian, like really, really put yourself in Brian's shoes and think about what that must have felt like for him. Wait. Girl, if you don't let me read what's on that paper. <laughs> now she can go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing at you. I'm not going to tell you. Okay, so what you guys are doing is, huh? No. I'll tell you the story one day. Um. So you all are thinking about what she should no, we afraid that day. Okay. She's careless. Do you think she's do you all think she's really scared to speak her mind or she just doesn't care? I'm asking. Like I think she's scared but at the same time she not. Like cause she could say so her dad had plenty of fights. Right. But at the same time she not. Okay, selfish. She should have been huh? No, I'm just asking questions. And she's right selfish because she, um, she should have took responsibility because that's her, her children. And she already don't want no kids, so I'm thinking like, Okay, so this is what I want you all to do. Like, take your thoughts and turn them into a, a, a diary journal entry. Dear diary, Today, we found out that Brian was molested by his grandma Irma. Blah, 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 blah. Like if she's, a, mm -hmm, if she's alone in her room, writing down these thoughts, replaying the incident in her head, what do you think she would say? Do you think she would say, oh, I wish I had been there for my kid? Or do you think she would say, well, it wasn't my fault. I wasn't there. I, I think if she's by herself, she'll, she'll say she should have been. No, I think she'll say yes. See, so that's something you all have to reconcile. Like, if, think about her in the novel. Mm -hmm. So she would probably, even even being reflective, she. That's okay. Even being reflective, she would probably not take responsibility. All right. All right. Good. Y'all got it now. Yes. Hmm. Oh, now this is getting on the right road. This is going on the right path. Especially when you say he was probably molested and in disbelief that it could reoccur. Um, that could definitely be a part of it. Definitely be part of the reason why he drinks so much. And I think it's safe to assume that he was neglected. Yeah, that's, you're on the right track. Okay, um, let's
pause for a second and hear from our group that is writing from dad's perspective because they I just read over theirs and they are on the path that I want all of you to be on when you're writing from your character's perspective. Okay. Mm -hmm. When he was younger, dad was probably molested and was in disbelief that it could reoccur. Uh, this could be a reason why he drinks so much. Dad was probably neglected as a kid. Uh, that is how, um, and that's how his dad probably handled the situation when he was younger. He was molested by her. Uh, dad did not even want to come home to visit his mom because he did not want to be reminded of his past life. Okay. Okay, so what they did was that they started to think about why some of the things in the novel are occurring. So let's just say that the father was molested when he was younger, right? And he had nobody there to help him. He had nobody to look out for him. That could go one of two ways. It could go that he is overly protective and ready to punch anybody in the face who messes with his kids. Or the other option is that he didn't know how to handle it then. He doesn't know how to handle it now. And so which option do we see in the novel? He doesn't know how to handle it now. Okay, then think about his alcoholism. And that's one thing that we've thought about um, in the novel. I'm sure you all have wondered about where does the alcoholism come from? And sometimes when we see people who are addicted to drugs and alcohol, we can make, from our point of view, we can look at them and we can make assumptions. Oh, they're dumb. Everybody knows that drugs can kill you or, uh, or drugs can harm you or drugs do this, that, and the other, and we pass judgments on them. But rarely do we think about what is it that maybe drove that person to, to that type of behavior, right? So just think about being molested at a possibly, possibly being molested at a young age. You don't have any outlet. You don't have anybody looking out for you because it's clear from the novel that he doesn't have a close relationship with his mother. So those sorts of things can, can have a domino effect and can drive a person to um, drug-related behavior or alcoholic behavior. So what they have done is they are piecing together clues. Um, what could have happened in his childhood that has made him the adult that he is. And so that's what I want all of you all to do. What could have happened in these in, in these people's lives or what thoughts could they have had that are shaping who they are now. So that is an excellent look at what could have happened <coughs> to their father that is making him respond in the way that he is to his child being in this incident or his child being um, basically sexually assaulted. Okay. Everybody understand, have a little clearer idea of where we're trying to go with this? Does anybody have any questions?